How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today, we're going to be looking at a solar inverter setup that you don't have to install. Whether you want it for uh, your RV or emergency backup, um, having an inverter setup basically in a box that you don't have to install can give you a lot of flexibility. So we're going to be reviewing the Safari ME. So I want to give you some thoughts and some things that we have noticed when we've been using it and who this might be for. Now, with a unit like this, it's easy to try and draw comparisons. We will do a little bit of comparing to see what this can do, but it's better if we look at the specs because it's not the same as an inverter generator where you can fill it up with fuel or run it off propane. Uh, and it's also not the same as a hybrid inverter setup that's on your RV that's built into it and the simplicity once it's already installed. Although there are some comparisons. So let's look at the specs and see what this can do because it has a, a 2000 watt, 4000 peak inverter. It has a USB-A, USB-C output, 12 volt output, 2,970 watt hour capacity with the expansion, 24 volt lithium battery bank, AC charger at 668 watts, has an MPPT solar charge controller at 585 watts, and the base has the ability to cycle from full to empty over 2,500 times, and the expansion over 3,500 times for the cycle. So depending on when you're looking at power stations, you'll see, um, things basically slide up and down. As the cost goes up, some of these numbers go up, and as the cost comes down, it might be the life cycle that comes down or the capacity or the output of the inverter. Uh, usually something is going to be sliding up and down uh, when you're comparing these. But you can see that this is a very capable unit. To me, I like it with the expansion. That's when it becomes interesting to me because it's very capable because of the capacity and the output at that point. Now let's break that down a little bit so we can see how it compares to systems that we usually install in RV. So let's start off with that inverter. It's got a 2000 watt inverter, 4000 peak. So uh, it's a decent inverter, especially for a unit this size. So that means that all those simple tasks, TV, charging devices, all those are gonna be up piece of cake for it. Uh, you're going to be able to do one large thing at a time. Like I said, if you want to turn on the, the tea kettle or the toaster oven or a microwave, you get to do one of those things at a time. It's 2000 watts. So I've been able to pull 17 amps out of it at a, at a time continuous. Uh, but you want to think about that as one large device at a time. You can probably run the microwave and have the TV on, but you're not going to be trying to run the microwave and the toaster oven at the same time. It's just not gonna happen. It's gonna pop, it's gonna reset. It's not what it's built for. But when you go out boondocking, you're usually trying to conserve power. So it's not a race on how much power can I use all at once, it's what can I do to be able to stretch the amount of power that I do have. So you're gonna be mindful of those things already. You're, you're not gonna be trying to run the AC on a system like this, but also you wouldn't wanna use a space heater. It just doesn't really make sense to use it on an inverter setup in an RV. So same with a power station like this. But the point is you're able to use those devices and have functionality inside of your RV. So the output of the inverter matches what would be useful inside. Now let's look at capacity. So with the expansion, you're looking at 2,970 watt hours. Now, how does that compare to the 105 or 100 amp hour battery? So it'd be like having two and a half batteries. To me, this unit makes most sense looking at it with the expansion. I mean, they're 45 pounds each basically. So being able to take them into pieces and be able to use it at your house for emergency, use it in the RV, it makes it very portable being in the two different pieces. Now, this can also take solar. So uh, you can put in 600 watts of solar into this. They have a kit where you can buy that with all of those solar panels, be able to set all those up to be able to charge this unit. It's nice that they put the MPPT charger in there, it just makes it more efficient and better for the unit. Now, I had mentioned that it's a 24 volt system built into this. So these panels aren't your 12 volt panels, uh, they are for a 24 volt system. You're not locked into these solar panels, but uh, they do make it really easy to where you can just chain them together and then you can have an extension. I have a 25 foot extension cable where you can bring that into the unit. So they did make it really easy in that regard. So for me, it was pretty easy to see some of the similarities to our system. We have 600 watts of solar. We have 315 amp hours for a battery bank, and we have a 3000 watt inverter. So you can see some comparisons, and we've been really happy with that size of a setup for us in this RV. 
So one of the big questions is where does it line up in pricing? I'm gonna put a link down in the description so you can check out the current pricing. But the interesting thing is that 15% off code that I was able to use for the batteries and share with you guys, you can actually use that on this too. So that would put the total price at 3,395. So I wanted to see where that compared to if I were to build a system for an RV. So I wrote down some information. I tried to match as close as I could to what was inside this unit and I came to $3,100 and that's before install, before you install it yourself on the RV. That one would require install, this one doesn't. Now, this thing isn't cheap, but when you compare it to a system of equal size, you can see that the price comparison is right there. Now, the next question would be, if you're looking for something like this, is how would you use it? So right now we have it in our storage bay down below. It was small enough in the two units our storage area, I've always complained about it. It's super small, super tiny, but we were still able to fit this unit uh, in our storage area. We put them side by side. We were able to plug the whole RV right into it and you could use it that way. Keeps it out of the sun, out of the rain, out of the wind. Uh, we couldn't close that door, but you could figure out another way to get that wire in there to plug in if you wanted to. You just wanna make sure that you're not using the unit so much that you're generating a ton of heat and overheating it in there. Light boondocking use with the occasional larger draw for some of the things for a short period, um, it would be fine. I would have no problem running it down there in that storage bay. If you didn't wanna use it in that way and you wanted to use it inside of the RV, you could just plug directly into it. Now, it's not gonna be loud like a generator, but there are some fans that kick in when you're using the larger draw item. So the microwave or, or something like that, you're going to hear that fan kick on so that it can cool itself down. Then that fan will wind down once it's cooled itself down and go back to a, a fairly quiet operation. But that would be something you'd wanna be aware of if you're using it inside the RV is that fan is going to cycle on and cycle off as needed. Now, there were a couple of things that I learned using this unit, some things that came in really useful and a couple of things that I'd like to see changed. First off, on the display, it gives you some good information. It gives you battery percentage that's accurate and it tells you how long till empty or how long to full, depending on if you're, you're charging it or if you're drawing out of it. But another key piece of information I'd love to see on here is how many watts that you're drawing out of it. So uh, that would be really useful. So if you're getting multiple things going, you can look on there and see, I'm getting close to that 2000 watt continuous. I need to uh, either turn something off before I turn something else on. Now for me, I was able to use our power watchdog. I use this thing all the time because it has the app and it tells you how many amps, how many watts. And so you can keep a really close eye on that. So being able to draw more than 2000 thousand watts. I was pushing it a little bit to see what it could do and it actually did it well. But uh, being able to have that display on there is would be fantastic. Even though I actually preferred it, having it on my phone through this power watchdog, that would be my preferred way. But I do know that down the road they are planning on updating the, the display to give you the watts in and out, which will be fantastic information to have on there. Now one thing that I would like to see maybe an improvement on in this unit, the, the case was great. It's a metal case on the sides. The handles were fantastic for being able to move it around, very mobile, very manageable, being able to use them in their, their separate pieces. Uh, but that front panel just has a little bit of flex to it. It wasn't a crazy amount of flex, but it would be nice if when you're plugging things in and unplugging them, if there was just no flex on that front panel. It wasn't a deal breaker. It didn't feel like anything was gonna break. It just had a little bit of movement when you were plugging in and unplugging things. Now, I was impressed with this unit. I was impressed at what you can do with it, how small of a package, just how mobile it was. It checked a lot of boxes that might be useful for some people out there. So uh, whether you're intimidated by an install or you're wanting the benefits, maybe you're going to be switching RVs, maybe you want emergency something for home and be able to have this, um, it might fit that niche of somebody out there that's looking for something like this. So it's different than your just normal power station because it had that expansion. Being able to plug that expansion back into the, the base and giving you a reasonable system that would work well for an RV, I thought was notable. So if you're interested in a unit like this, if it would fit your style of RVing or a niche that you might have, uh, you could put in the All About RVs code to be able to save 15% off this. That's actually a considerable amount when you're looking at a price of a unit like this. So I think that's gonna do it for today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos about
about RVing, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you next video.